Hello everybody and welcome back to another video today. We're going to take a look back at what happened in week 24 of the 2020 season of the Overwatch League. I'm going to do things a little differently than I normally do. I'm going to try to focus on just a few matches specifically. Um, I'll talk about them all at least a little bit, but there's some that I want to focus on for the most part. So let's start by just really quickly throwing up my picks from this past weekend. As you can see here, 0-2 on the big picks, 8-4 overall. Not an awful week for the overall record, but big picks did not did not pick them uh, properly. Um, not a lot of surprises, I think, uh, in most of the, the games. The Eternal beat the Titans, very convincingly, kind of expected that. Charge beating the Spitfire, something you expected to see. Charge have been really, really good recently, though the Spitfire have been on the rise. They're not at the charge level yet. Gladiators over the Titans, there was a bit of a question mark surrounding that one. A lot of people thought that the Titans might have a good chance to win after the Gladiators lost to the Justice, but Gladiators came out, looked to be better than we've seen them in a while. They played some Bishu. Good win for them, uh, helping them go a little bit higher again in the, the standings after having some up and down weeks. We'll see if they continue their good performances going forward. A Defiant against the Justice. Not a really great match. The Defiant won. They won... Not super convincingly. Uh, it was, wasn't was close, but there were some uh, obvious moments where you could tell the Defiant were not uh, in top form. It was ultimately, though, a one-sided series by score. It was a 3-0, but um, the Justice weren't playing too poorly. There were actually times, especially on the first map, um, Lee Jong Tower, I thought that it was very possible the Justice would win the series, or at least win that, that map. But beyond control, it was, it was pretty pretty much in the Defiance control, um, but an interesting series nonetheless. Shock beat the Uprising, which isn't surprising. What was surprising was that Super played the Genji. <laughs> now that, that was very surprising, and I was not expecting that whatsoever. So, you know, it happens sometimes. Uh, the Eternal beat the Defiant on Sunday. Not a surprise. Eternal looked very good. Defiant didn't really... Uh, keep up with them in a lot of instances. Though the Defiant didn't look bad, they had, uh, especially in the first map, they looked pretty good. But it was it was good to see the Eternal uh, look strong uh, in two back-to-back -back games. They have three 3-0s all season, and two of them were this past weekend. So Eternal are definitely getting to be their best version yet. Mayhem beat the Rain. It was a pretty good series, 3-1. Uh, I say it's a pretty good series. It really wasn't actually um, that that good. Um, uh, except for one map, uh, Route 66. It was very, very one-sided for the Mayhem. They they were they were in control of the series from the beginning. And the final series of the weekend was the LA Valiant against the Boston Uprising. Uh, I'll talk more about the LA Valiant Atlanta Rain game here in a little bit. This one didn't really make me feel that good about the Valiant. Boston Uprising weren't that good, and I still don't think the Valiant performed all that well. Especially on Hanamura. They didn't even cap A on Hanamura. They just got more progress than they gave up to Boston. And they won in that way. The Valiant, a little bit worried about them going forward. A little bit questioned about some of their compositional choices. Uh, you know, against Atlanta. Which I guess we can talk about the Valiant. And we'll, we'll, we'll start with them. Um, with the Valiant, when they played the Rain, they ran KSP KSF. I believe the entire series. So they were running Ash Genji. Didn't really look very good. Uh, Erster Edison for the Atlanta Rain were pretty much just dominating on the Genji Tracer, doing way better than what the Valiant were really able to do. It was a 3-0 win for the Rain. Once again, proving that they can only win when they win all three maps uh, in a row in the beginning of the series. Obviously, the Atlanta Rain had announced on Friday, Baby Bay retiring from Overwatch and Kodak moving to a coaching role within the team. So they're down two players. Maybe they'll make some additions here by before the end of the season, but I wouldn't I wouldn't plan on it. I think they'll likely just go forward with the 10 that they have right now. But Erster and Edison were winning in the compositional matchup when the Valiant were not running the, the Tracer of their own. And they didn't run Tracer the entire series from everything I, I can remember. They ran KSF on the Genji, KSP on the Ash, McCree, 
I think it was mostly Ash though, and uh, it didn't really work uh, at all. So the Atlanta Rain get a good win in in that match. Something you kind of expect from this Rain team to finally start getting those wins. When the Valiant went up against the Uprising, they changed it up. They ran KS, F, and Shax at the beginning of the series uh, to run the Tracer Genji. Then they ran KSP on Hanamura, and I think they ran KSP again on the last map. I don't remember. I didn't pay the closest of attention to... Uh, no, they were in KSF Shacks again, and then they had a, a pretty uh, easy win on Route 66. So what, I, what I'm seeing from Valiant, among other things, is that the overall composition is, that works is Tracer Genji right now. You don't want to run Genji Ash uh, or even Tracer Ash. You want to have that Genji because Genji is very strong and you want to have Tracer because Tracer is good and Tracer can harass an Ash if there is one and can harass the backline more than what Ash can. So that's a, a potentially a bit of a weakness for the Valiant. If KSP can't really play, they look slightly weaker, though I, I think KSF had a, had a good performance on the Genji. I don't think he was bad at all. And Shaxx and the Tracer is always going to be a positive. Um, but I thought they looked the weakest in the series against the Uprising when they didn't have Shaxx in. I thought they looked the best when he was in. So I just think that's what it comes down to. You have to be running Tracer Genji as much as possible uh, because it's just not a good composition without it. And that's uh, that's that's the Valiant's weekend. The Rain, their win over the Valiant was good for them. It helped them, obviously, boost a bit of their record, and they looked good. Like I said, they had a good map against the Florida Mayhem. It wasn't uh, incredible, though, from them against the Mayhem. The Mayhem looked Look much stronger. The rain, I think, are going to continue this kind of trend of they'll beat some teams that are better than them or around them in a dominant fashion. They'll lose to some teams who are around them uh, or slightly worse than them. But I need to see the rain get a win where they don't win every map, where they win an extended series, a four map, a five map series. They have not done it once this season. Every time they've lost a map, they've lost the series. It's a horrible trend to get yourself into. I don't know how the rain have managed to get themselves stuck in this situation time and time and time and time again, but they have, and that's where we are with the rain. I want to talk about a couple of the other matches that took place. Let's move on to the Battle of Texas, which started on Friday, or happened on Friday. I picked the Outlaws. The Fuel ultimately won in a reverse sweep. The ending to that match, heartbreaking for the Outlaws. They C9'd the point. They didn't touch uh, on Nepal village and the series went the way of the dallas fuel but like i said the dallas Fuel reverse swept i think the biggest problem that the outlaws ran into was in the main tank matchup i don't think hydration was necessarily bad in this matchup i just think that hydration was weak he didn't have the level of performance that you would expect from a main tank player and he especially struggled when it came to the later half of the series where the team, uh, the Dallas Fuel kind of figured out uh, how they were playing around hydration and were able to kind of uh, uh, abuse it and figure it out. And I think that that's really, really, really where we see the problems for this Outlaws team. They don't have a solid main tank player. Um, hydration can play main tank. But he can't play main tank on every main tank hero, and he doesn't play it at a level that you would want out of a, a, a starting main tank player. And while the team knows how to play around him as a main tank, over time, it just becomes abusable because he's not going to win those duels. So you pretty much have a main tank player who's going in and dying, much in the same way that, say, Bumper did with the Titans last year. Not the same style of play uh, by any means. But much in the same way that the, the Vancouver Titans were able to play super well because they knew how to play around Bumper very well. And the talent elsewhere on that team was just so transcendent and strong that they could win a fight when they were down 5v6 because Bumper did the damage they needed him to do. He went in, he got enough damage, made enough space for the rest of the team that they could get into position to make the, the plays to be able to then win the next fight. And they had a lot of fights, so they were winning them, you know, 5v6 or, 
you know, where the person dying first was Bumper and they were turning fights around despite that. So that's kind of the, the big um, thing that we kind of see with Outlaws, I think, is that they are playing around hydration and they're finding some success with it. But I think teams are finding out how to beat it better than they were with the Titans, for example. And it's a really, really, really interesting series to see develop. And it's a really interesting team to see their style develop. But I still think they need a main tank player, one who is especially proficient on your Ryan and your uh, your Winston. Hydration can play the Arisa well, but he's not going to excel on the Ryan or the Winston. He just doesn't have the mechanics for it. And it was very obvious in the series that he just is not a super strong Winston or Reinhardt. But he can play them to a level that the team can manage. But it became a point later in the series where Gamsu was just winning the tank duel. And the rest of the Houston Outlaws players weren't able to turn the fight in the way that they had wanted to. Uh, in the way that they had originally. So it wasn't a bad series. Uh, the Outlaws definitely made some mistakes towards the end. Uh, they made some adjustments that didn't work out very well. But ultimately, I think that... Um, the Outlaws are going to have to look to get a main tank for the future if they want to really have a shot at being a, a contender in the future. Let's move on to the Spark against the Dynasty. This was uh, an interesting match. The Dynasty were my pick to win. I thought the Dynasty looked better recently. I thought the Dynasty had been having more consistent performances. I liked what they did when they rolled out at the series, beginning of the series, running... Marvel Michelle as their tank line. I thought that that was a good idea. I thought it would be a good way to kind of change things up, see how things went. It didn't work. Uh, the Hangzhou Spark looked very good. They looked like they were back into their... Uh, the, the form that we saw them in at the beginning of the uh, Summer Showdown when they beat New York, when QOQ came in and he was looking very good. And when Architect came in, they, they looked like they had kind of, they have started to get back to what we kind of expected the Spark team to be with these additions. And they looked very, very good against the Dynasty. It was probably the best they have looked in a long time. I don't remember the last time I thought the Hangzhou Spark looked that good, except for, I guess, when they beat New York. Um, and even they looked good against the Guangzhou Charge when they played against them. Uh, you know, that was a 3-2 series. That was a close series against a really good Guangzhou Charge team, and they almost beat them. And then they had the loss to London, and they lost to Shanghai in a, in a bad fashion. And they just hadn't looked very strong recently. Um, they lost to Seoul in the um, Summer Showdown Qualifiers. Like This was a team that had a, a number of things going kind of against them. They hadn't looked super good recently. They were struggling. There were a lot of question marks around whether or not they would be able to get back to the form they were in, and, and they, they did. They performed at a very high level. I think that they're a team that when you look at them, they, they seem like a team who, who does genuinely have the chance to be a top team in Asia. It, I don't, you know, they, they might be able to say that they're the number three team in Asia. They might be able to say that they're the number four team in Asia. You know, it really depends on, on who you put above them. But I think if they are in form the way that we have seen them recently, um, I think there's a very good possibility that we could be saying that the Hangzhou Spark are better than the Seoul Dynasty because they just beat them, better than the NYXL, because even though they just lost them in the Summer Showdown, the NYXL don't look to be performing at a very high level right now, whereas the Hangzhou Spark, who had been struggling, kind of worked together put aside what was kind of going on, managed to kind of clean up their play, and they looked way, way, way better recently. So this is a team to watch out for. I've always been very high on the Hangzhou Spark. I think that they are a team who have a ton of potential uh, to make a deep run in Asia, but there's some things that they'll need to change and things that they'll need to fix up before I think they're going to be, you know, definitely a threat, but they have certainly, certainly, certainly cleaned up their play, and they looked a lot better this weekend. Now, let's talk about, oh boy, the worst match of the weekend by far. It was, it was not good. It was sloppy. 
it looked like it was going to be a clean 3-0 sweep for the NYXL, and then they just choked. The Chengdu Hunters with a reverse sweep of the NYXL. It was bad. It was very, 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 very bad. It was not a good series to watch. It was um, really, really, really weak from New York. They ran Who Are You for most of the series, which I don't think was a problem. I don't think Who Are You was, was really uh, playing poorly. I don't think he was really the issue, and especially because in the first two maps, but Who Are You was really, really good. One of the things I don't really love about New York's compositional choices, I love SBB as a player. I love Nene as a player. I don't love when they play together. Um, I just don't think New York has found any success with those two playing together. I don't know if it's necessarily just because those two playing together don't doesn't work very well or if it's more you know specific something you know like compositions that they're running when those two go in they're just the compositions are the worst at or it's just the maps that they're the worst at i don't know what it is but i can't think of a time when those two came in and and won especially on a map five um i don't know why you don't go to a map five and put in hoxel nene uh or hoxel sbb if you're gonna engage a tracer i just think that there is so little success with that composition that that we see them run and it was obvious that they were just not they struggled the last the second half of that series they looked bad they are a team who i'm i mean i'm a fan of the nyxl and i have no faith in this team uh last week when i was talking when i made my picks i was talking about the fact that you know the series that new york has had with chungdu recently have, have gotten progressively closer it was a 3-0 to start the season for new york then it was a 3-1 then it was a 3-2 and now it was a 3-2 reverse sweep loss. So the pendulum, which I don't think they play Chengdu again this season, but if they do, the, the pendulum may swing towards Chengdu's side and New York starts to struggle and they don't look super good. Um, I don't know what is wrong with New York. I, I, I genuinely have no idea. Someone needs to help me find out what New York is and what's wrong with them. I think it's really just, I mean, they don't look coordinated, but, but what is the root cause of that? What player is it that, is struggling what players are is it that struggling I, I don't really know exactly what their problem is like if you're gonna run brig compositions and you're you know you're gonna go into a match and you're only gonna run brig on main support why would you not run hoxall when hoxall is one of the best brigs in the league if you want to play aggressive with a brig well hoxall your guy right you don't need animo if you're gonna play aggressive brig you can just play hoxall and if you're running, you know, I don't know what compositions. I mean, Brig Bap is a pretty good composition. You're going to run Joan Acker, you're going to run Brig Bap. Right? And then you can run Who Are You or Libero or, you know, whoever you want in the flex DPS and you can play around that more. But it's, they just don't, they look like they have players who, who want to do something and the other players don't know how to do it. Like whenever Hawksall was playing in the Summer Showdown, except for when they played against Hangzhou, but when they were playing against uh, Guangzhou, it looked like Hawksall wanted to go do something. And would basically say that and or would go in to do it and none of the team would support him so there's a possibility that that's because hoxall wasn't saying hey i'm gonna go do this help me out what i think is more likely is hoxall was like i'm gonna go do this and the team just wasn't coordinated enough to dive with him to figure out how to do it um and maybe the reason why hoxall wasn't playing was because he was not communicating well and there was just a, a an obvious lack of synergy there i don't really know I don't want to take away from Chengdu because I do think Chengdu made very good adjustments in the second half of the series and managed to win because of it. But New York is the, the team that you need to put blame on for, for this loss. They, they did not look good. They did not look coordinated. They fell apart at the second half of those series. You'd hope that they would bounce back from this loss and say, we need to fix and clean up what we've done. But their, their schedule in June is very, very difficult. They need the... If they want to be serious contenders in Asia, in, in the league in general, they needed to win this game because their next game is against Guangzhou. They have not beaten Guangzhou much this season. They've beaten them once. The, then they play, I know, Shanghai uh, the week after. And then I believe it's the Countdown Cup. Um, is that next week? And then when they come back after their play... Again, in the Countdown Cup, they play Seoul, which is definitely a winnable game for them. But they have a tough schedule for the remainder of the season. They needed that win against the 
Chengdu Hunters because they close their season against London. Now, London, winnable game for New York. I think they should win that game. But they needed to get the wins against the teams that they know they can beat. Chengdu, London, Seoul, so that their matches against Guangzhou and Shanghai wouldn't hurt them so much. So that when they when they pretty much guaranteed lose to Guangzhou and Shanghai, they would still have those three other games that they could cushion their record with so that those two losses wouldn't affect them that much. Now, they lose to Chengdu. Then that is a pretty much guarantee now that they're going to lose to Guangzhou and Shanghai if it wasn't already guaranteed. And that means they, they maybe win two games the rest of the season if they're lucky. Uh, but now even them playing Sh uh, Seoul and, and London is in question. So really weak performance from New York. Very disappointed in them as a team. Not impressed at all by their performances. Uh, you, you wish you'd see more from this team, but they haven't shown it. And uh, that's, that's really where I am with this team. Disappointed. Um, upset with the way they played. And I think that there needs to be a lot of adaptation and learning how to play as a team for New York because they are the quite possibly the worst coordinated team uh, that people at one point in time would consider to be one of the best teams in the league. They don't look it right now, and I think that it's very obvious that the NYXL are not uh, serious title contenders because they have not proven anything so far this season. But that is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing for more content like this in the future. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on anything that happened this past weekend, uh, especially New York, because New York is a team that, to me, uh, is the most um, frustrating, especially recently. Uh, but that's all. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy, and I'm going to get out of here. So thank you once again, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.